Modern Arkham City is essentially a character-driven experience. So the most important thing is to have the right voices for those characters. Working with Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy is fantastic for us. Like most people, you know, when you read the comics, these are the voices you hear of Batman and Joker. So, yeah, it's very hard to imagine the game without them. Batman isn't just this steely-eyed guy doing some rooftop dropping down, making the odd, you know, quip and then punching people, you know, he's going through hell. You're not safe here. No one is. Kevin would come in and go, no, I don't think Batman would quite say it like this, or now, this is how I want to say this line. And we're like, OK, cool, awesome, <laughs> let's go for it. Don't worry about me. You're needed out there. I've been doing the character now for 20 years. The audience knows him as well as I do. They would know in a second if I did something inauthentic, and they'd call me on it. <laughs> Get out of my way, Quinn. Leave us alone, B-Man! I said move! <laughs> when you see Mark, uh, become the Joker when he's actually in the recording booth and doing these voices, he actually physically kind of twists himself and manifests himself into Joker. <laughs> Mark, sometimes I think he actually is Joker, so he just turns up and he just nails it. In fact, we rewrote all the dialogue to really fit into where he was taking Joker. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> you fell for the old sick Joker guy, Batman. There's something about scary clowns, you know, that, that it just creeps people out. But you of all people should know, there's plenty wrong with me. His purpose in Batman's orderly world is just to mess him up big time. Take my blood, for example. I wish somebody would. This stuff is killing me. Why should I care? <laughs> because now, there's a teeny little bit of me and you too, bats. He gets great joy out of just the most sadistic, oddball things. Imagine sucking down that last breath knowing that Gotham is doing the same. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, didn't I say? I've spent weeks shipping samples of my blood to emergency rooms all over the city. Because of the complicated character, Bruce Wayne and the Joker, there's a sort of a mutual respect there. Even though he knows he's insane, and he knows he has to be controlled, he would never want to kill him. Whereas the Joker is constantly trying to kill Batman. Hold tight. I'm in touch! <laughs> Starner, she came having prepared absolutely everything about Talia. She was a huge fan, as it turns out. You know, read all the books, read all the comics, and just really understood it right from the get-go. It's different voicing a character versus actually acting or performing a character on screen. The only tool that you have to access is your voice. How did you find us? I recognized your personal guard. It was just a matter of following her. Please, mistress, he tricked me. Leave. I will deal with you later. I think Talia is really interesting because she skirts the line between good and bad. And you're not sure if she's completely aligned with the bad guys or the good guys. You didn't need to get yourself arrested to see me, Bruce. After that night we spent in Metropolis, you could have just called. She has this dichotomy in that she's sexy and she's vulnerable, and there are some things that can pull at her heartstrings that she will fight for that suggest that she's more than just like a cold assassin. She's got something that she's willing to risk her life for. You lied to me. I thought you loved me, Bruce. Authentic voice acting and having this direct link into Hollywood and working with all these great actors, I mean, it, for us, it, it's the real difference between making a good game and a great game.